in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning to every one of you. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, the Lord has enabled us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. May the Lord be with you and enable you to glorify His holy name through our singing, through our prayers, and through our meditation. God bless you all. Let's begin this worship time with a word of prayer. Let's close our eyes and look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Father, creator of the whole universe, we thank you for this blessed day, O Lord. Thank you for being with us all through our days. And particularly, we thank you for the nice sleep and rest. O Lord, you are the one who has created us. You have been with us, helping us to receive many, many blessings from your loving hands. Yes, Lord, you have seen us many, you have helped us to see many happy days. When we were sick, you healed us. When we were in trouble, you helped us to overcome the problems. O oh Lord, we give all glory to you, O oh Lord. Above all, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sake and for our salvation. O oh Lord, be present in our midst as we worship you. Help us to glorify your holy name through our singing, prayers, and meditation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us glorify the Lord by singing the opening hymn. Dearly beloved, today we observe 15th Sunday after Trinity. So let us spend some time in prayer. First, let us offer the collect for this day. Keep we beseech thee, O Lord, thy church with thy perpetual mercy. And because the frailty of man without thee cannot but fall. Keep us ever by thy help from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue to pray. Glorious Heavenly Father, we lift up our hearts in praise and thanksgiving to you as we enter another day. We praise you for the glorious promises 
you have given us for our spiritual growth. We thank you, Lord, for your eternal purpose that each of us must become like your son, Jesus. What a great expectation this is. O oh God, we are not at all worthy of this. We thank you for all that you permit in our lives for accomplishing this unique purpose. Though we don't understand certain things at times, help us, O oh Lord, to stay put and quiet, realizing that everything is in our good only. We thank you, O oh Father, for the ministries and means you have given us so we may be sanctified and strengthen to grow under the full stature of your Son. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who is shaping us into a useful vessel for you. Help us, O oh Lord, to remain submitted to your rule and authority. Let us ever be sensitive to your voice, O oh Lord. Particularly, we humbly ask you to be present all through this day. Help us to glorify your holy name, whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we think. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we shall hear the epistle portion for this day. The epistle for the 15th Sunday after Trinity is taken from Paul's letter to the Galatians Chapter 6, reading from the 11th verse. Galatians, chapter 6, reading from the 11th verse. See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised and only in order that they may not be persecuted at the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But far be it from me, to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision but a new creation and as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. Here ends the reading of the epistle. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, Chapter 6, verses beginning from 24 onwards. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will devote to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? 
and which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life and why are you anxious about clothing consider the lilies of the field how they grow they neither toil nor spin it i tell you even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these but if god so clothes the grass of the field which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into oven will he not much more clothe you o oh, you of little faith therefore do not be anxious saying what shall i shall what shall we eat what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself sufficient for the day is its own trouble may the lord add his blessings upon these holy words let us once again glorify the lord by singing another hymn let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight o lord our rock and our redeemer amen dear beloved once again i greet you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ once again the lord has enabled us to gather together and worship him and receive his blessing through his living word <clears throat> and today i would like to share few thoughts from the gospel portion that was read to us today because this is another beautiful passage that we have in the scripture i personally feel that every day people should read this as they read psalm 23 or recite the lord's prayer now the theme of this beautiful passage is as 10 tips for overcoming anxiety 10 tips of jesus christ to overcome anxiety <clears throat> he in two places says do not be anxious or do not worry immediately we ask this question can a person live without 
worrying about one or the other thing at one time or the other <clears throat> every person every normal person worries about something or the other at any any particular time <clears throat> children worry about the exams parents worry about the children and many a time we worry about so many things it's an ordinary human phenomena <clears throat> now is it possible to overcome worry yes there are few things that i would like to share with you how to overcome this anxiety based on this person a passage as well as from personal experience let me begin with my personal experience once i was pastoring party pastorate in chennai and i had to look after a church at koratur it's also a big church and another small church bilivakam the thing is on christmas and new year day party and koratur would like to have special services at the same time since i have to be in party that's a main church having many members many families i had to find another person to conduct service on christmas day at koratur so i was posted there in june so i waited till uh, september october and then started looking for a pastor a retired pastor who would come and conduct service on christmas day and easter day at koratur <clears throat> but i found many retired pastors were booked at one or the other churches one pastor said thambi you are too late people book us in january and november to conduct the christmas service in december and i was amazed and i searched for a pastor finally i found a person <clears throat> a pastor who was serving as the secretary general secretary in bible society in chennai i was happy we printed the bulletin and it was circulated and on december 23rd morning i got the news that the retired the the pastor who was serving in bible society had an a heart attack so he won't be able to conduct the christmas service at koratur i didn't know what to do i searched for other pastors i couldn't find anyone and finally i called the secretary and treasurer and told them about it and they said pastor the only option that we have is you finish the party service and come over here by the time we will be singing you will start conduct uh, uh, some uh, prayers and other things you come over and give a brief uh, sermon and then distribute the communion <clears throat> but on 24th morning to my surprise one of our members came and said pastor my uncle a retired pastor had come from kanyakumari uh, will you allow him to help uh, in distributing communion so that he could help you and i said he doesn't have to help me he has to conduct the whole service at koratur let him go and conduct the whole service not just helping another pastor that time i knew that the church belong to god god takes care of the church sometimes we worry about many things without knowing that god has a definite plan for you and me and for his church dear brothers and sisters in christ there is a difference between worrying about something and being concerned about something when jesus said don't worry don't be anxious he was not asking us to be careless or unconcerned about certain things no a student has to be concerned about his exam he has to take the exam seriously 
and that will help him to study well but if he starts worrying oh i will fail i will fail then he has a problem so dear brothers and sisters in christ there is a difference between being concerned about certain things and worrying about something let me place before you the dictionary meaning for worrying worrying is an emotional state arising in situations of impending impending danger or expected unfavorable events many a time this is the catch word many a time in an exaggerated way or completely imagined in other words what this definition says is that many a time people worry worry about a real event they may think that would be unfavorable but many a time they exaggerate the situation oh this will happen that will happen that would never happen okay so many a time people worry about something which is really a futile thing or useless things now let me uh, place before you the 10 tips that jesus gives us in this beautiful passage and close the sermon take the passage if you have the bible start from verse 25 in verse 25 jesus says we have to differentiate between the essential things and non essential things valuable things invaluable things important things and less important things sometimes certain things would be very good we need them but look at the priority which is more important which comes secondary which is essential which you can survive even without that so you have to be careful in that secondly in verse 26 and 28 he says if you worry about something just get out of the house look at the nature start looking at the sky start looking at the birds start looking at the flowers or if you stay home okay if you have a fish tank watch the movement of the fish or switch on the tv and log into some uh, channel that gives you uh, videos about nature just look at the animals birds colorful birds colorful flowers that's what jesus wants us to do when you worry about something look at the nature that god has created in a wonderful way then he says no in verse 26 and 28 again he says know that god has provided you the know how that is comparing with birds and other things we have special skill skills given by god to do things to spin to weave to do many things god has given us talents god has given us mental capacity god has given us wisdom and knowledge to do many things so because god has provided us provided us with many skills we can do something earn something and fulfill our personal needs then fourthly he says in verse 26 and 32 bear in mind always always that you have a heavenly father yes we have earthly father um sometimes you would have lost your fathers and mothers but at the same time always remember you have a heavenly father who is taking care of you who loves you who watches over you he is your father never never forget that in verse 26 he says realize that god values you much more than the birds and other living creatures 
yes we are much more superior than other things other creatures we can speak we have the language and languages and we can laugh we can uh, communicate with each other and we can think we can plan out in a far more superior way than the other living creatures so know that we are made in a special way and you are special in the sight of god many time i used to say for god <clears throat> we each and every one of us are one of its kind what do we mean by one of its kind if you take an article there won't be any other article like this something unique for example you ask your child to draw a picture about nature or anything the picture drawn by a child <coughs> is unique even if the child has the name of another child when the other other child draws the picture it will be completely different your child's picture will be something unique in the same way there is no other person for god like us in the whole world you are very special just imagine in those days parents had uh, uh, nine or 10 children yes yes beside my father and mother we have many uncles and aunties okay so even though your mother has 10 children or nine children each one is special to the mother she won't leave even one in the same way god treats you in a special way you are unique in the sight of god then sixthly in verse 27 he says understand the futility of mere uh, worrying about something yes it's useless in other words uh, moreover i would say it is counterproductive see a child has to write an exam another week another one week <clears throat> instead of worrying about it if the child starts reading regularly that would be more beneficial than worrying about it and not studying spending sleepless nights by worrying about the exam and not studying is futile useless uh, counterproductive so what the lord wants us to do is to understand the futility of mere anxiety or worrying about something seventhly in verse uh, 30 we read that jesus christ asking us to have strong faith he condemns people who hold of little faith he wants us to believe believe in god have strong faith in him then in verse 32 he says bear in mind that you are a chosen one now he said see the gentiles seek after these things in other words he implies that you are different what's the difference between the israelites and the gentiles the israelites worshiped one true god and knew what he would do what he had done in the times of past for example the 10 plagues that god sent among the egyptians in order to redeem is the israelites think about what god or the miracles that god has done as they traveled in the wilderness so israelites were different they knew who god is what he can do to his children or to his people at the time of danger so in that way you are also different you are a believer never never forget that and then in in the ninth point ninth point in verse 33 god says 
Jesus said, do the work of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, do good always. Start doing something righteous. Yes, when you start doing something good, that will please God, do something right, something good, something loving, okay, you will be seeking the kingdom of God around you. As you do it, God will uh, furnish all the other things that you need. Then finally he said the tenth point, okay, take one day at a time. Yes, you plan for the future. Be concerned about the future. Be serious about it. But don't worry about the future. Just take one day at a time. What you have to do from morning till evening. And do it perfectly. So each day, fulfill the duty of God and glorify His holy name. In these ways, you can overcome anxiety or worrying about something unnecessarily. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, hold on to these 10 tips that Jesus gives you and me. Read it every day and be strengthened in faith. God bless you. Let's pray. Loving God, we once again come to you and thank you for this blessed day. Lord, continue to be with us and uphold us. Let thy presence be with us always. As we lead our life, help us to overcome worrying and being anxious about certain things. At the same time, O oh Lord, help us to glorify your holy name through whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we think. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dearly beloved, on behalf of you and on behalf of St. Matthias's church family, I congratulate all those who are celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week. Let's pray for them. Loving God, we once again come to you and thank you for enabling us to worship you. Lord, continue to be with us and uphold us. Particularly, we place the people who are celebrating the birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week. Continue to be with them and uphold them and bless them and bless the families too. Enable them to celebrate many more happy birthdays and many more wedding anniversaries. Lord, we also commit those who are sick. We humbly ask you to stretch forth your loving hands and touch them and heal them. We also pray for senior citizens, O oh Lord. Strengthen them and uphold them. There are many people who are bedridden, we humbly ask you to strengthen them and help them to experience your love, joy and peace in whatever situation they are in. Let thy presence be with the families, O Lord. Continue to be with us, our holders. We also pray for our leaders of a nation as well as the state. Lord, be with them and guide them. There are many states where Many people are affected by 
this virus a deadly virus lord be with the families and strengthen them guide the leaders to take the right measures so lord we also pray for other nations in this world where peace is disturbed particularly we remember afghanistan palestine and israel myanmar there are so many places oh lord where peace is disturbed lord you are the prince of peace we humbly ask you to guide the leaders so that your people may experience your peace in those nations lord we once again thank you for this blessed service continue to be with us and lead us in jesus name we pray amen let us say the lord's prayer together our father chart in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen may the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us and with our families now and always amen let us once again glorify the lord by singing the closing hymn